this is the new Flo. So we don't know each other long enough for me to tell you about her personality. <laughs> but so far she has settled in lovely and she's a really uh, soft nature. And I think I've found her scratch spot. Uh, short horn. Dairy short horn. Dairy short horn, is that mean pure or no? Um, actually, a lot of Tom Kane's cows are purebred short horns, but he uh, doesn't register them. So Zoe here is a purebred short horn. Oh, yeah. Is that one of the newbies as well? No, Zoe is the first, uh, yeah, so our you know, first milker. Her last yeah. Uh, this then is Little Red. She's the heifer, so she's the youngest of them. My little red. So she's the bottom. So cows, uh, cows have a real hierarchy. Um, so this is a new girl here. So I call her Socks because she's got two white socks. And she's got a white udder and the rest of her is red. But she also has horns. And she has enjoyed letting the other three know that she has horns. So horns would make them a bit more dominant. She's actually not the matriarch because the cow she came with, Flo, is a month older than her and she actually bosses her. So I thought she might be the whole boss of the herd, which is really good if you know who your matriarch is because then if you form a relationship with that cow that if you call and she comes, they'll all come, you know, that kind of way. And we're just not there yet. So no one is stepping up to the plate to be the full on boss. So this is Lo because Lo originally came with Flo and they just rhymed. <laughs> yeah. The trick with cows is just uh, ste slow and steady. Mm. Do you know, I hate when people go in and they're like, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, you know. But then, if you're working nine to five and you're in a rush and you gotta get stuck in, you're like, come on, come on, come on, come on, go, go, go. Do you know, of course it's going to be like that. Do you know, there's always trade-offs in life and like I think of the village here and I know there'd be us and the two other dairy farmers. And actually, no, there'd be us and there'd be two other dairy farmers. But one of those dairy farmers uh, also works. So there's probably only two of us in this whole 4.5 kilometer road, I'd say, that are working full time. That I know off the top of my head, you know. Nearly everyone else would have to have some kind of job to su supplement their income. And then that standards, of course, are going to fall. And it's too easy to be like, oh, it's all farmers' fault. It's not farmers' fault. They're caught within a system that doesn't reward them. And this is it. Like, when you have, it's as simple as this. When you have industry, develop strategy, and you have the government that takes that as public policy, then it only has one goal. Mm. So but once a day, okay. Once a day, um, for a couple of different reasons. So we have a, it's a closed-loop system, so I want to kind of run it as under the whole kind of circular economy approach. So um, we don't feed any meal. There's no imported meal here. So they have to get everything they need from the pasture. So that's also why we have to ensure our pasture is nice and diverse to make sure that they're getting everything they need. You know, it's like dandelions. People think dandelions are a weed, but dandelions are a taproot. Um, and when cows eat them, you know, they're able to, those taproots are able to pull up minerals from deep within the soil and the cows can get that then through it. Yeah, that's so dandelions associated with milk and stuff. Yeah, again, it'd be better carotene. Yeah, that's what we But um, I think if you're really going to understand farming and the issues within farming, whether you want to look at them from a social, economic, environmental or cultural lens, you have to know how industrial agriculture works and you have to understand that from all those different lenses both for yourself to have a full appreciation of what's going on and I also think for yourself to figure out a different way to farm like I knew all the wrongs and all the rights of industrial agriculture from uh, from a book study perspective you know because obviously that's what I did was climate change and agriculture but I never I still just didn't have that connection to really what farming was. Even when I was looking at it kind of going, oh, well, we can farm better by doing this or by doing that. That's all fine and dandy and that works fine on paper. But how does that work on the ground? Like, I think there's so many things in, particularly in, in climate change 
and in the whole sustainability movement that probably doesn't fully understand how nature works. And I think you need to be in nature to really appreciate it. If I was in, in Dublin and not on the farm, I would probably, would probably be not 100% vegan maybe, but I'd definitely be there. Because from a book paperwork perspective of how things are, uh, you know, when you look at it from an emissions perspective and that, um, and even from an ethical perspective, um, I'd have to be like, God, I, I can't do that, do you know? But now on the farm, sorry socks. Um, it's different and I have a completely different understanding of it. Bless you all. Um, I have a completely different understanding of it. Do you know? So I, I, I get it, like, when you are, it's, it's, it's like I said, you know, when we can look at farmers and we say, oh God, those farmers, they're awful the way they're doing things. But stand in a person's shoes and you soon begin to understand why they're doing that. And I think that's also for the same, particularly among the younger generation who are uh, choosing to be vegan for environmental reasons. And you can't help but blame them because, you know, you look at the way things are and how can it be any other way? And there isn't enough of us, you know, doing this to feed enough people either, like, so... You know, you, like, that's why I hate the term niche product. I hate when people say to us, oh, you're doing a niche product. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing a niche product. They're cows. We farm the soil. They eat the grass. They create milk. And we just bottle it in a really clean environment to make it as safe as possible. That's it. There's nothing niche about it. Like, it's just... <sighs> Food. Hence why I call her socks. <laughs>